In all my years playing football manager, I don't think I've ever managed this messy guy before. You know what? He's quite good. I really hope Mr. Killian doesn't sell him out from under me, but it is the January transfer window. There is a little bit of money to spend. I really hope he behaves himself because we're doing quite well on the pitch. Hello, folks, and welcome to part two of my series Inside a World where Killian Mbappe is player director of football at Paris Saint-Germain and he's in charge of all the transfers. If you missed part one, you should really go back and watch it. But for a very quick, really quick summary, we signed Paul Pogba and a load of so-so squad players and everyone who we didn't want got loaned out and we didn't sell anybody. So money-wise, we're doing okay. We're Paris Saint-Germain. We're probably going to be fine for money. On the pitch, we're doing really, really okay. Look at these results. Uh, Ligue 1 going really quite well. Like I said in the intro, this Messi guy, he's quite good, isn't he? 20 goals from 15 appearances in the league, averaging a 7.97. Also got nine from five in the Champions League. At international level, he's only got five from six, which is pretty disappointing. But 21, 29 goals from 21 stats in all competitions so far this season. It's almost as if the French League is easy. Uh, talking of easy, our Champions League group went quite well as well. Uh, we did have a group with Barcelona and Leipzig in. Leipzig missing out. Barcelona just about scraping through, but we uh, we were pretty comfortable in that group. And once again, that Messi guy, he's quite good. He's my hot tip for a player who is quite good. You know who else is quite good? Neymar, who's still on the transfer list. And I think if we're going to do any significant business in this January transfer window, it's probably going to come from selling this guy. I suspect that's easier said than done because he's on a £600,000 a week contract with us. Even if someone was willing to pay the price for him, I suspect nobody's going to take over that salary. So we are probably stuck with Neymar. Oh no, stuck with Neymar. We're probably stuck with Neymar until the end of his contract. But looking through the rest of the squad... Certainly of the original transfer listed guys, there's not really anybody left. It is quite a small squad. Uh, we do have an offer in for Rafinha at the moment, but it's a it's a pretty small offer. Um, it's not the kind of offer that's likely to lead to us having loads more money to invest. And like I say, I mean, we're, we're doing all right. We could probably bring in one or two players. A really interesting thing, as we are about to hit the 1st of January, is what's Mr. Mbappe going to do? when it comes to offering pre-contracts. Of course, we signed Paul Pogba last summer when he was out of contract with Manchester United. There's likely to be... In fact, should we have a look? I mean, there's no reason why we can't have a little look. We're not putting ideas in his head. Let's take this off. If we have a look at players whose contracts expire in the next year, I think that's probably the easiest way to look at this. Um, there, are, there are some players that we could go for. I want, we might sign Jamie Vardy. That'd be nice. So the January transfer window is over. We don't talk about Montpellier, uh, but there have been transfers and it is about to be deadline day and there might be even more, as you can see. There is, there is stuff going on as we approach deadline day. The actual transfers that have already been made, Gonzalo Martinez, who is a winger, 29-year-old Argentinian winger, has come in from Al Nasser in Saudi Arabia, previously of Atlanta United, uh, River Plate, Huracan. Um, he's been around a little bit. It's a weird... It, Killian, it's a weird sign in that one. Um, and then just to mess with me, the guy who I've never been able to say despite signing him a million times before, Sime Vashalko. Is that how you say this guy's name? I always get it wrong. Um, he's always a pretty solid right back in Football Manager. Um, but it's a position we don't need. We already have Hakimi. Why do we need to sign a 31-year-old Vasalko? Nobody knows. Um, to fund all of that, we did sell Rafinha for 3 million. And then we've loaned everybody out again, including, I mean, Antwerp. Look at the amount of play. I know they're our feeder club. But I can see why the loan regulations are being changed to stop this happening when we can send this many players to Antwerp, including, of course... Andrew Olawabori, who we are keeping an eye on as the former Peterborough guy. Uh, we turned down a 300,000... Well, I say we. Killian turned down a £300,000 offer from Bournemouth for him. So there's lots of clubs chasing around after him. There's still clubs want him now, um, looking for him at the end of his contract. Uh, but he's not any good. I'm uh, Talking of end of contract stuff, obviously we already have Zinchenko coming in permanently in the summer. 
Um, we the only player he's offered a pre-contract to is Luis Muriel, um, Colombian international striker off of Atalanta. Which again, it would be a weird signing, Killian. Um, and players lead it, leaving the club. No one massively significant. And we did turn down a loan offer, or in fact, we accepted a loan offer from Manchester City for Wijnaldum, but Wijnaldum turned it down. And then we've turned down an, a, a permanent offer from Inter Milan. So Wijnaldum potentially could be on his way out, which the amount of midfield talent that we've got now, I can I could probably cope with him leaving, to be honest. Um, but... I mean, the team is good. It's it's a good, solid team. There's not much that needs to be changed for that. So I can see why Killian's not making any major moves. He does have a bunch of transfer budget, but he's over the wage budget and committed. Spe- Should we shuffle some of this around for him? I mean, he, may, maybe he doesn't know. I feel like I could shuffle some of this around for him and say, look, look, you can buy some more. So he's committed to up to six points. So I don't know if we do it to like that, put it in the middle. Put it to there. There you go. You got seven million of budget. You got some sparesies now, Killian. Let's go do deadline day. Um, hit continue. In fact, it's a few days till deadline day, and we've got to play Leon first. So let's go play Leon. Then we'll come back for deadline day. I've I've miscalculated when deadline day is. I thought it would have been on the thirty first, but looking at this, it's actually on the. Why would it be on the second? What a weird thing. Okay, apparently I haven't got this wrong. We still haven't played Leon. It is now deadline day. The only transfer rumour we've got is an offer for 36-year-old Tom Heaton from Manchester United. I really hope that happens because that's bonkers if it does. Um, I don't know why they're highlighted. What makes them highlighted? And um, The other thing I wanted to show you is we have um, loaned Kayla Navas. He's gone out to Lazio on loan with a £4 million future fee. And we did confirm... For the summer, the signing of Luis Muriel. He is going to be coming in from Atalanta, presumably on absolutely insane money because of the amount of... I mean, he must be on over £100,000 a week, which seems mad for a player who just isn't going to be a regular starter for us. I can't imagine why we'd use him, but deadline day, there is money to spend. What you going to do, Killian? What have you got for me? Look at all that money you've got to spend. You must have a plan. Yes, we'll do squad registration. Um, which we can st- domestically. Squad registration is done. There is your offer for Tom Heaton. Nobody knows why. Why are we making an offer for Tom Heaton? I mean, I guess, yeah, we've let Navas go. We need a backup goalkeeper. But Tom Heaton, and now we're making an offer for Omar... At Zilli, another winger. I mean, that guy literally plays in the position I've been using Mbappe in all season. Seems even my dog is furious about that transfer. Just had to go and calm him down. Um, oh, the Tom Heaton deal has fallen through. Here's me pressing continue too many times. Um, Cancelled due to Manchester United having an automatic contract extension clause. So United have fought for him and kept him. They wanted to keep hold of Tom Heaton. I don't, I don't understand the Tom Heaton bidding war between two of the biggest clubs in the world. But while that's going on, we have signed Omar Atzili. I don't understand what the... I mean, Kill, I need to get Killian. Get Killian on the phone. I need to know what the plan is. What are we supposed to use this guy for? I'm sure Killian has a thought process. But if we have a look on the squad depth... So he's got Messi, Mbappe... Neymar ahead of him. Then Gonzalo Martinez, who we've also signed this window. Zinchenko, who we're on the verge of signing permanently. He's currently here on loan. Wijnaldum, who we're turning down offers for. And Omar Itzili is there. There he is, look. I reckon he's going to play loads of football for us. We had all that money to spend, and that's what we've spent it on. There's still money in the kitty, Killian. Go buy something. Go treat yourself to something nice. It's deadline day. Treat yourself. Goodness me. I'm ju- I'm hit- I'm continuing to hit continue, and we don't seem to be doing anything. Nobody's co- I mean, look, Mo Salah's right there. We probably can't afford him, but we are Paris Saint-Germain. I guess if we decided we wanted him, we could find a way to afford him, but maybe Mbappe only wants to bring in players in his position if he knows he's better than them. And that's why he's a little bit afraid of bringing in Mo Salah. Oh, the PSG fans are going to be cross. 
Um, Ariola's looking to force a move out of the club. We haven't got Tom Heat and Ariola can't go anywhere. We only have so many goalkeepers. Oh, and now we've got to play Leon. So I'll go do this off camera and then we'll continue deadline day. Well, as if to prove a point, um, Mbappe's got himself injured in this game, which might affect transfers for the rest of deadline day. Messi's had to go off injured as well. So two of the guys I was mocking, um, Martinez and Atzili, have both come on and there uh, they combine for our equaliser against 10-man Leon. We have struggled in this game, but we have come back into it since making these substitutions. But there's your man Atzili. There's Gonza There's Martinez. He's actually picking up his second since coming off the bench. And... They're inspired transfers, Killian. I take it all back. You know far better than I do what this club needs. Let's hope this injury doesn't keep you out of doing your uh, your director of football duties for the rest of deadline day. I love it when everything goes yellow on match day for deadline day for no reason. Uh, but Killian, no time for treatment. There's still transfers to be done. Let's see what more we've got in the inbox. So initially, just confirmation that that was an inspired <laughs> signing uh, because Martinez, I mean, yeah, two, <sighs> he scored four goals in one start since arriving for us. That makes Mbappe look like an absolute genius. He's plucked an unknown guy and just turned him into a superstar overnight. But it, I mean, we're running out of time here. There's an hour left on this deadline day. And I don't think we're doing any more business unless something snuck through right at the end. So confirmation of our big deals of January. Vasalco coming in from Atletico. Martinez, who of course we've just seen score two goals. At Zilli from Maccabi Haifa. They're not typical Paris Saint-Germain transfers. Um, but then we didn't have much coming the other way this time either. Kayla Navas considered the top deadline day deal or top transfer window deal in the whole of League 1. Can we still register a Champions League squad? Um, it involves unregistering Mauro Icardi. Wow, that seems seems bold. Can we not just put him back in? I mean, we can leave him in. And I have to question why we why 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 would we take why would we take him out? Quick pick. No, at Zilli either. Can we just put him in? No, so we can't add it. I think I'll leave Icardi in the squad if it's all the same to you, Mr. Mr. Quick Pick. We'll leave that one on there as well. Who who have we got in the next round in the Champions League? Inter Milan. Of course it's Inter Milan. The other big transfer of January that I didn't mention before is we do now have a third assistant manager, Thierry Henry, who is splitting his time between being our assistant manager and still Belgium's assistant manager. But I guess because we have two other assistant managers, it doesn't really matter. I've never known a club have three assistant managers before the way we have in our senior squad, but we do, those three. Plus seven. There's five men in, employed by this club as assistant manager. Um, that's, I mean, it's just Mbappe things. He's involved. He's in charge of doing all the staff transfers and contract renewals as well. Right. As mentioned in episode one, the focus now is all on the Champions League. We're going to assume we're going to win Ligue 1, even though we've had a little bit of a slip up there in January uh, with a draw against Lyon and losing against Montpellier. We are still six points clear. So we're not going to show you any games in the league. Um, but what I will do is show you the Champions League run-in from here. Well, we made it past Inter. 1-1 away from home in the first leg before a 3-0 win in the home leg. Two very late goals, making it look more comfortable than maybe it was. What wasn't very comfortable was the first leg against Bayern Munich in the quarterfinal, heading to their place. They stuck four goals past us. Yeah... Yeah, we're going to try something a little bit different for this second leg uh, for the first time all season. And we're going with Mbappe as an advanced forward as our man up top. Uh, Messi as the false nine didn't get the job done against them in the first leg. So we're sticking Messi out onto the right hand side. Just a slight tweak to what we've been doing. In the very unlikely event, we make it past Bayern Munich. In the semi-final, it's Real Madrid or Manchester City. So I suspect... We're probably not going to win the Champions League this season. I mean, it's a very good look inside. It's going to be very interesting to see what we end up with next year because, of course, we've got we've got Killian doing transfers again this summer. And as Paris Saint-Germain, I'd like to think we'll have a massive pile of money to spend. We are looking pretty good for winning Ligue 1. We are well clear 
at the top of that. So I don't think there's any danger of me getting sacked. What I haven't looked at is what the board are looking for as expectations for me in the Champions League. Is this quarterfinal, presumably quarterfinal exit, is this quarterfinal exit going to be enough to avoid me getting the heave-ho? I hope so, as long as we deliver the league title as well. Um, I'm never going to get used to this ticky-tacker stuff, by the way. I think as I become more established at the club, assuming I don't get fired, um, but as I become more established, I might try and convince Killian that we need to move away from ticky-tacker. Um, I just can't... Neymar getting the ball inside the opposition half and playing it all the way back to the keeper, I find it troubling. It's all a little bit too slow, a little bit too patient in the build-up. It, it suits Messi, but Messi's not going to be here forever. So maybe we persist with this for as long as Messi's at the club. And then once we... There's going to be a time before Mbappe's contract ends, I think. So before the end of the series, there'll be a time where we're without both Messi and Neymar. And that's going to be very, very interesting because I would assume our best chance of winning the Champions League is with those two in the team. But who knows what kind of transfers Killian's got in mind for the summer. I mean, this is some lovely football here. We are, we're playing nicely, but we are four goals down. So it doesn't really matter how nicely we're knocking the ball around inside the penalty area if we don't actually make the breakthrough and score a goal. Gundogan playing it back to Hakimi there. Hakimi has led a little bit of a dressing room mutiny as well. He wants a new contract. Mbappe is not entertaining him in any way, shape or form. And now he's got like three or four players who are all agreeing with him. We've had to have the team leader meetings, all that kind of stuff. Also, as part of the mutiny, Icardi not turned up to training last week because he wants to leave. He wants uh, regular first-team football. Doesn't seem to realise that with the front three that we've got, he's never going to be a starter here. He did turn down loan moves back in back in the summer. So he had the opportunity to go and get that regular first-team football, but instead decided to stay and fight for his place amongst the the most famous front three in world football, which... I mean, you don't admire his confidence, but now he's just, he's gone from confident to just giving up and not turning up to training. This is lovely for Mahakimi down this right-hand side, charging forward. This isn't very ticky-tacker. This is much more like my kind of football. Gundogan, try, I mean, it ends up back with Hakimi. Someone's got to cross the ball, though. This is where the ticky-tacker takes over again. Pogba to Verratti, and now Messi. Mbappe, look, this is, it is lovely possession football. We are a good team. And we do have a goal. The dream might not be fully over just yet. It's 1-0 to us on the night. Still 4-1 to Bayern Munich on aggregate. But when you've got Mbappe, Messi, Neymar, Pogba, Hakimi, we've got some, we've got some game-changing players on this pitch at the moment. And we do have a goal. So let's... Let's see what happens, I guess. It is Bayern Munich with the uh, with the free kick, but Donnarumma is there to collect. I mean, I do have previous uh, for sending Donnarumma forward for corners, so maybe maybe we resort to that. I mean, imagine if we have Donnarumma on the near post here. Messi, with the in-swinger, ends up with Neymar, but his effort goes over and stuff like that, I think probably needs to be ending up in the back of the net. If we are, if we're going to find a way through this tie, Mendes has now picked up an injury, so Zinchenko can come on for him. Pogba is having a poor game, but to be honest, Messi and Neymar are both absolutely shattered. We have got the inform Gonzalo Martinez. This is when you know you mean business. Take off Neymar, bring on Martinez, um, and now I guess we have to take off Messi, bring on Icardi. It's like admitting defeat doing that, isn't it? We'll switch him around into there preferred positions we're going to have to go a bit more attacking and you take off Messi and Neymar 20 minutes to go it's like admitting that you've you've had enough of this tournament unless Martinez can show up with a few goals again like he did well he's done a couple of on a couple of occasions he is something of a super sub for us Kimpembe to Donnarumma back I mean this is I hate Tiki Taka get the ball forward but Martinez who I seem to interchange calling him Martinez and Gonzalez because apparently I don't know the difference between those two words. I think Gonzalez is his first name. Zinchenko, Mbappe nods it down and now Gundogan with an effort that just, it's not good enough. We have been the better team in this second leg, but when we were so poor in the first leg, it really counts for nothing. Our Champions League dream is over for another season. 
I need to just check in with the board to make sure that they're uh, they're not going to get grumpy with me for getting knocked out in the quarterfinal. But hopefully, the fact that we got past Inter gives me a little bit of a a cushion. Um, Champions Cup not judging. Why would they not be judging the Champions League? That's a strange one. Um, fair enough. They're not going to get fired for that. They do, however, want me to win it next year. So we are going to need some uh, some slightly better transfers from Mr. Mbappe um, this summer. We'll just finish off the season, just to confirm our victories in hopefully the League and the League Cup and get ourselves ready for episode three, which will be the next transfer window. And that will release as soon as we hit 5,000 likes on this video. Remember, 5,000 likes on a video means the new episode, the next episode comes out. Otherwise, it'll be out on Saturday. So if you want it, if you want to see that sooner than Saturday morning, make sure you leave a thumbs up. 5,000 likes, we'll release it as soon as. But let's get this season finished off. And there is your confirmation of a comfortable uh, league earned victory this season. We won it by miles, 102 points. Messi finishing top scorer and best player. Who'd have thought um, Neymar 18 assists as well? Like, is there anyone interested in Neymar? Of course, there's nobody interested in Neymar. We did also win the French Cup uh, thanks to a Messi hat trick and an Mbappe goal. So a domestic double. That'll do. Uh, the board seems suitably impressed, which is always good. And Killian's going to be busy this summer. A £246 million transfer budget. We're just going just gonna to make it so that there's a little bit of wage budget for spare as well. And we will find out how he spends it in the next episode, which remember, you'll get once we hit 5,000 likes on this one. If you have enjoyed this video, though, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. Tor will be back tomorrow. And thank you very much for watching.